Now here's the interesting bit. The total mechanical en energy of an object can only be increased or decreased by some forces. Shockingly, not all. I'm sure we've all heard about the term energy conservation at least once in our lives. So when is this energy of an object conserved and when it's not? As always, when in doubt, let's go back to our dropping bowling ball. Very simply, the energy conversion in this object is from potential energy to kinetic, ki kinetic energy. In an ideal scenario, all the, let's say, 150 joules of potential energy in the ball when it was held in my hand would be converted to 150 joules of kinetic energy when it reaches the ground. This means at any point in time, the total mechanical energy of the ball remains at 150 joules. But hang on, isn't it weird that although gravity does work on the ball for the entirety of its fall, the total mechanical energy of the object does not change? Now that's because gravity is what we call an internal force, a force which does not and cannot change the mechanical energy of an object no matter how much work it does on it. Another example of an internal force would be the elastic string, spring force. Energy of an object is conserved and when it's acted upon by an internal force. Then what's an external force? Like you would expect it to be, an external force can change the mechanical energy of an object by doing work on it. A classic example to appear in all your A-level practice questions would be friction. An object moving over sandpaper slows down because of the friction between the object's surface and sandpaper acting in the direction opposite to its motion. When 5 newtons of friction acts on an object for 2 meters, it does thus 5 times 2 times cosine 180 degrees, negative 10 joules of work on the object. The object loses mechanical energy, or specifically kinetic energy, and slows down. Other examples would be air resistance and applied forces.